Hey there, writer rebels. With a ton of literary devices out there to enhance your prose, how do you use them within your work? Join me today while I give you some tips on how to use literary devices. Hey everyone, it's me, Scarlett Cole, young adult author, YouTuber, and storyteller, and I am back today with a video on how to use literary devices. If you have been following along with my Back to School Author Academy, I have done several videos on various different literary devices over the month of September. So you're probably thinking, why am I doing a video about how to use literary devices at the end of my series instead of at the beginning? Well, I'm going to tell you, but before I do that, I want to thank everybody who has joined me for the Back to School Author Academy. I definitely have some new viewers out there and I really hope that you're enjoying what you're seeing. I do continue with content throughout the year about publishing and writing. So if you are not a subscriber, make sure you're hitting that subscription bar and the notification bell. And if you like this video or any of my videos, make sure you're giving it a thumbs up. So why am I making this video now? Why did I not make it at the beginning? Well, the fact of the matter is there's some things about literary devices I didn't want to really discuss until I really laid out there what literary devices are. To be honest with you, as as a avid reader, I've read a lot of these literary devices and not really realized what was going on. Some of them are a lot more obvious when you're reading things, but there's a lot of things in prose that we see that you don't necessarily realize is as intentional as it is. When I learned about literary devices, I actually had already written two books at this point, but I had never consciously made the decision to use specific devices or paid attention to them when I was using them within my own writing. So I wanted to give examples of literary devices and where we would see them in prose so people would understand what I was talking about when I got to a video like this one on how to use it within your own work. In each of the videos I've done so far, so if you haven't seen any of those videos, make sure you're hitting up that playlist and it's going to give you all of my literary device videos. But if you've been following along so far, I have I've given some examples of where to use them in your work, but not really how to apply them to your work. So this is where this video comes in. Hopefully it's going to be helpful for you. I'm basically going to talk about my process and how I use literary devices and where that kind of came in for me and where it can be the most useful. So to be honest with you, I never really learned much about literary devices until I had already got a few drafts under my belt. I had actually sold a book at this point, so I was not really expecting this to blow my mind, but I did go to a convention where they talked about literary devices and how you can use them. I've discussed a few of them that I learned there and in my series and a few of them that I have come across on my own, but it was really, really eye-opening. The problem that I had when I walked out of that though was, how do I use this? This is all great information and super, super interesting, but how exactly am I going to apply this to what I'm doing? I write genre fiction. I write teen books. Does that necessarily mean I'm going to be able to use these literary devices? I'm not going for a Giller Prize or Reese Witherspoon's book club. How does this apply to me? And the other problem with that is I felt it was a little bit overwhelming. So I'm having a hard enough time getting my plots together and now you're telling me you want me to use literary devices and that I need to be that cognizant of what I'm writing? Uh, forget it. So if you are feeling overwhelmed by that, there's nothing saying that you have to use literary devices or other than the ones that you're already using. There is no literary device police saying that this is something you have to do. But I ended up using it in a lot more situations than I actually expected. And now that you have this information, maybe it's something that you're going to want to use too. The way that I do tend to use them the most is in the editing process. I'm actually a really lousy drafter and I do a lot of my work within the editing process. So how I came across this was actually by accident. After I had gone to the convention that I learned about literary devices, I came home and I was working on editing A Mercury Rises. So several months later, I have referenced this book a couple of times. And the reason for that is because this was the first time I'd actually intentionally used literary devices. So I knew exactly where to find them. Basically what had happened with this book is I was working on the edits for it. And I came to a particular chapter that I knew needed to hit really hard. It was very emotional. It was two characters that usually don't get along very well. So the emotions between them would be very strained if they emoted at all, even though it needed to be a very emotional scene. There was a lot of action that they were coming out of. There was something really big coming up. This was a pivotal, pivotal moment for this book. And it was just not popping 
at all. And I didn't know what to do. So I had rewritten this chapter several times. I couldn't figure it out. And then I remembered this convention that I went to. So I pulled out some of my notes and I did some searching on the internet about various different literary devices. And one of the things that I found is, A, there are a ton of literary devices. I've done a few videos, but I haven't even scratched the surface in the amount of things that there are out there. So if you do look things up, for instance, there are some really, really great ones that are very simple, like diacopy. Diacopy is where you basically sandwich a word in between a couple of different words. So Bond, James Bond, run, Forrest, run. This is something that you could really easily use to punch up a paragraph. Let's say for instance, the last line in your paragraph was he was finally dead. So take that however you will. You could also write it as he was dead, finally dead. You're using diacopy with those two words dead sandwiched in between that finally dead. And that sentence is gonna punch so much more. Very, very simple fix. By using a literary device, you make that paragraph, that line pop. Other ones you can use are like alliteration. I'm sure a lot of people have heard of that one where you're basically using the same syllables or sounds in a row. Salazar Slytherin, it kind of gives that vibe to it. And the which ones you use, that's kind of like that slimy, sneaky kind of thing, feels very sneaky. So you could use something like that, hyperbole, which is where you're exaggerating something for effect. You know, it's the, it's not necessarily the end of the world, but you can describe it as the end of the world, even though we know that it's not actually the end of the world, unless you're writing dystopian, because then maybe it is. But using something like that, or very simple ones which you've probably learned in school, similes, metaphors, irony, those sorts of things. They're all literary devices. So when I came to this particular chapter, I didn't know what to do with it. I searched up literary devices. What are things that I could use? Basically what I did is I experimented. I tried a bunch of different things to see what was going to work, what was going to make sense in that particular scene. I looked for why you would use particular literary devices. Is it going to tie into the emotions and things that I want to convey in this scene? Well, I found a few that worked for me. And to be honest with you, I am super duper proud of that scene. One of the ones that I hated the most because it was so much work and I had to rewrite it so many times is one of my favorites out of any of the books I've written because I found a way to make it pop by using literary devices. And to be honest with you, there wasn't a ton that I needed to do with the chapter itself. It was just a few little changes that elevated it so much more. So if you are working through the editing process, this is one of the things you can definitely do. If you get to a scene or something like that, that you know just needs to pop and it's not already based on the writing that you've already done and you're not really sure what to do with it, literary devices can be a great tool for you. So what's the first thing you're going to do? One, identify the scene that you need to use it and why why it's necessary that it needs to pop. Do you need a particular emotion? Are you looking for a particular aesthetic? Are you trying to get a point across? Are you trying to foreshadow something so people need to see it? What exactly do you need to get across? Number two, look at the literary devices at your disposal. Watch my videos, check out the internet. I'm sure there's other YouTubers out there that have videos on literary devices. Look up for the things that you're trying to have the impact that you want it to have. What are you looking for? What are you trying to do? And then my third suggestion is just experiment. You can rewrite things as many times as you want. Try throwing something in simple, like the diacopy example above the, he was dead, finally dead. Is that gonna be enough punch for what you need to do? If it's not, erase it, put something else in there. Try a bunch of different things and see if that's going to make the difference in your writing. If it's not, it's not the end of the world, but I will probably guarantee you that by the time you're done experimenting with this, there's gonna be something that's going to resonate within your work that you're probably gonna to wanna to keep. And it's going to make things a whole lot more interesting for your reader as it's going to vary some of the writing that you've already done because obviously you're not going to want to use literary devices every single paragraph. I've warned about that all month. So this is going to be a little bit of a breath of fresh air within your particular scenes, a little something different, a little something extra, and a little something more that's really going to bring your reader in. And also start small. There's nothing saying that you need to use all these literary devices, nor would I suggest using them, especially all in one piece of work. It's going to get a little too much for your reader. So pick one that you like, that you want to try out. Just give it a shot, see how it works. It's like using a word of the day, you know? How can you fit that into a sentence? Does it work for you? If you like it, great. If you hate how it feels on your tongue, don't. 
No one's forcing you to use them. There's no literary device mafia that's going to show up in your house and make sure that you put it in your next manuscript. But I can guarantee you that if you give it a shot, I think that you will be all the better for it. Thank you so much for watching and I've really, really enjoyed doing this series for you guys. If you want to be a subscriber, make sure you're hitting the subscription bar and the notification bell below this video. And if you haven't already, make sure you're hitting that like button to let YouTube know this is something worth watching. I will be back next week with my September month vlog. I've had a lot of stuff going on in behind the scenes. So hopefully you are going to want to check that out. And then I'll be back in October with some Venn videos that I already have planned out. So, Thank you so much for watching and I hope everybody had a great back to school.